All right, Sean Tattel, FightHype.com, here with the head of Showtime Sports, my man, Steven Espinoza. Steven, uh, actually, first off, we're in Texas. How how's this feel for you, you know, come this far in your career and you're promoting a fight at your favorite football team? I know, what was your father, father, grandfather? Yeah, my, my, gran my grandfather, Cowboys yeah. And, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a native Texan, um, El Paso and Dallas, and a, and a huge Cowboys fan, so, no, this is, this is special for me. I mean, um, they're... You know, obviously they don't do a ton of fights at AT&T Stadium. Um, you know, basically Errol and Canelo, um, two of the biggest stars in the sport. So it's a it's a thrill. It's a it's definitely a career a career thrill. And you know, you can get you know slightly better Mexican food here than New York City too. So that's a plus. Absolutely, Madison Square Garden's tacos are terrible. <laughs> um, but why do you think Errol's able to sell? Able to actually fill a room this big when he's not he's not boastful like Adrian Broner or why is it, how's he pulling this off? What do you think is attracting? You know, the it's a, it's interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a great question because you know there there are some guys who are relatively I wouldn't call Errol shy, but a guy like you know like Tank, you know a little bit shy, mm -hmm. you know, but still a massive draw. Um, and I think it's you know for him it's his performance in the ring and you know it it's interesting to see the the transformation of who he is outside and inside. I think Errol. Errol is just somebody that's very humble and down to earth and very relatable. Um, is it an authenticity I, thing I, with these guys? Very much so, yeah. and especially, especially here in in Texas, and you know, to be authentic and relatable and humble, and you know, really, you know, he's grew up here, he stayed here, he's very much a part of the community, and and people feel connected to him, and you know, he's he's almost like one of the pro sports franchises here. And his style is almost Texas, right? Not, not the two yeah. old, you know, just, Right. Yeah. It is, it's sort of straight ahead, you know, not a lot of deception. It's, you know, I'm better than you and, you know, I'm going to show you. Now, the big news, you know, this, well, first of all, this is a great fight, but of course people want to see the winner, whether it's Ugas or Spence against mm -hmm. Crawford. How realistic is that fight actually happened in your estimation, Stephen? Well, um, you know, there haven't really been any discussions about it yet, obviously, but um, I would say I'm more optimistic now than I was a few months ago, um, simply because, you know, some of the obstacles are out of the way. And I'm, I'm not saying top rank is an obstacle per se, but, you know, their deal with ESPN and who they do business, you know, it's one of the obstacles that's now removed. You know, there are no limitations in terms of promoters or networks. And I think that makes things you know, a lot easier. And then, then you heard what they said at the press conference. I mean, both these guys acknowledge that's the natural next fight. So it seems like, look, I would say our chances are better today than they've been at any point in the last few years. Yeah, neither guy threw cold water on it at all, especially right. Arrow. Right. Uh, no, I, I think it's come to the point. It's like, you know, whoever wins, that is the natural next fight. I mean, look, you know, uh, Arrow's gone through the gauntlet already. You know, for the most part, I mean, there's a couple guys out there, obviously. Boots, but you know, there's Boots, you know, and there's Thurman if they ever want to settle that. Um, but you know, you look at these two guys, and you know, between, you know, you've got to sh throw Sean Porter in there as well. But Sean, Errol, Ugas, you know, they've never hesitated to fight anybody. You know, short notice. You know, coming up injuries, whatever it is. Speaking of you know obstacles in the way of the fight, does this news recently about the Kinahan stuff? and the U.S. sanctions and the fact that he may or may not be associated with Crawford, is that a potential obstacle or, or could that get in the way of a fight happening? I mean, it, it could be. I mean, obviously there's a lot of concern um, at the highest levels of government about Daniel Kinahan and, you know, and where his business, you know, is. So, yeah, I, I think there's still a lot to be learned. Um, and I think there's more that will come out. Um, you know, with with a move like this, I, I don't think this is the end of the story. Wouldn't surprise me if there's additional actions by the Treasury Department or the U.S. government uh, to go forward because they've obviously been looking at this very closely. So, it, it is a a a potential problem. Um, you know, it's, the sports always had the reputation as being in the red light district. Like, what mm -hmm. are your thoughts overall on this situation, if any, if any, you choose to share? You know, look, I, I um. It's not a it's not a good thing for the sport, you know. You know that's for sure. Um, you know, yeah. There's there's been maybe a higher tolerance for, you know, that within the sport, um, and I think that's one of the things that's kept it, you know, as you say, you know, it, it's a little bit of a positive or negative. It's not a, a positive in the sense of having people like that within the sport is not a positive. But look, 
people <laughs> view it as something that's sort of sort of edgy and it's sort of mysterious and you know and it's Vegas and there's this allure to it um, it's certainly not corporate it's a little bit of the wild wild west and people who love the sport love that aspect of it but by the same token there's a difference between being you know you know no holds barred in the wild wild west and then you know having people who are legitimate you know global you know criminals being directly involved in it so um, yeah it's you know keeping people like that out of the sport you know I think will will be ultimately a, a long-term benefit for the sport and we know you're an excellent businessman how big of a fight business wise is Crawford Spence right now do you think him beating Porter helped elevate the fight and, yeah what? yeah I look it's the natural next fight you know and I, I think there's no one, no one who's at least tangentially or hardcore. There's nobody who's a boxing fan who wouldn't be interested in seeing, you know, um, Spence and Crawford. You know, it's not one of those. You know, yes, people have been looking for it for a while, but it's not one of those where it's sort of like past its prime. It's still no, no. a very good fight, you know, right now, and one of the top two or three fights that can be done in a division. So if you're at all remotely interested in boxing as a sport, you're watching that fight. So that that means it's one of the biggest fights that can be made. Would it make sense to get straight to it, or should Crawford have a, a fight where he gets himself shown on the Showtime brand first? Look, I, I'm, I'm, look I, I'm of the mind that you go straight to the fight. You know, and I know, you know, uh, Crawford's been off a little bit, but, you know, Errol, you know, we've seen Errol come off of, you know, two long layoffs and two, you know, horrendous injuries, you know, and he hasn't done any tune-ups. And, and I'm of the mind, you know, guys at that level, with that level of experience, you know, you don't need tune-ups. These guys are professionals. They know how to run a camp. Um, yes, there's always the concept of ring rust, but the reality is these guys have been doing it their whole careers. And I don't think if we're going to do it, let's let's do it. Let's not waste any more time. Hmm. All right. Thank, thank you so much, Stephen. Okay, uh, you got appreciate it, your time. Good fight Saturday right. night. Looking forward to it. Good to see Thanks. you. Thank you.